and this is why I felt we'd be okay with that Harbaugh suspension because these guys are so interlocked as one team, one family yep. that it doesn't doesn't matter what's going on outside. They're so focused on themselves and getting to that goal, and they've shown it all year. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I, I scoff at uh, at Kate when she says, you know, Michigan versus everybody. I, Kat will say that every once in a while. Oh, the state of Michigan versus everybody. But one of the things that I love is that they, like you said, they've really embodied that. I mean, mm-hmm. they've really taken on the persona of their head coach. And and Harbaugh is f all of you. I got my guys. We will go up against anybody, and I already know we're going to win. And that's that confidence. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But it's also the culture that he's built. He's yep. built that culture that if you rely on me and you give me 150%, I will take you to the promised land. And he's on the doorstep right now. So regardless of what people think about Harbaugh, the guy gets results. He did it with yep. Stanford, did it with the 49ers. He's doing it now with Michigan. You got to give this man his due. You know, I, I know I, I'm outside, so I can say that <laughs> freely. All right. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy that just outcoached the greatest college football coach of all time, if not the greatest football coach of all time. Like the, yeah. the game plan yeah. he put together versus Alabama was a masterclass. Yes. It that yes. defense was artwork in that entire game. It yep. was phenomenal. Um, when JJ threw that ball and the uh, right first play in the corner had his foot out of bounds, but picked it off. I was like, oh, boy, here we go. Yeah. And then that drop punt, I was like, oh, boy, here we go. But then I saw that defense come on the field, and it was like th- that switch of, oh, boy, here we go. Like, we're yes. we're in this. Like, um, <laughs> And, yeah, no, it was just phenomenal performance by the coaching staff and the players. They all just bought in, and they did it. They took down Alabama. Yeah. And I mean, look, let's go right into that. And I I think that was a great point. I mean, we got to really understand who this Alabama team is so as to understand how big this win was. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have Nick Saban. Everybody knows how great he is. But when we looked at this team, Alex, you and I have both said this is the least talented team that Nick Saban has had in, in the last, what, 15 years? I mean, and it's still like 25 five stars. Like, right. Right. And it's crazy when you really think about that. But this team ex- overachieved to the point of, you know, only losing the one game, beating the, the two-time defending national champs in the SEC championship. And to be honest, this game kind of surprised me. Not, I wasn't surprised that, that Alabama was playing so well. But like you said, I mean, your defense stepped up early. Your defense had, what, four sacks in the first couple of drives, a couple back-to-back sacks. Yeah. I mean, they really kind of were holding – uh, uh, Milro at bay early on, but it's still Bama and yep. Bama, like you said, that early part of that game. And, and I'll, I'll t- I will talk about this little piece in a second, but that early part in the game when McCarthy went out and threw the passes, and you know, he had the what the he had the pick and then the pick that wasn't that was called back. Yeah, you know what I mean? That that to me, there was a point where I didn't say this to you, but I was like, oh. shit. Yep. Here we go again. Yeah, not to see you all over again. No, but like I said to you in the group chat, if there's anybody that is ready for this exact moment, it's you guys. You've been mm. through it with TCU. You've been through it in the CFP the last couple of years. If and McCarthy is calm, you got Corm. That start to the game was shaky, but talk to me, man, because. You got on track, but you didn't even pass it first. Like, you didn't run it first. You started to, like, come out and pass the ball, and I was kind of like, what are y'all doing? Yeah, I was a little surprised by that, too. I think I almost wonder if we were passing to set up the run because, I mean, everyone looks at Michigan and knows they run the ball well. Yeah. So I I kind of I, – I thought we'd still run the ball off the start because we just – we did it anyways for most of the year. Um, especially against the good teams late in the season. But when we started passing, I was like, okay. And I, I think a lot of it was the faith in the defense that yeah. if JJ struggles early, let him get settled in. If he throws a pick or two, whatever the defense has us, it's a bold strategy. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think once we started to just kind of get to Michigan football and running the ball and that power run and wear them down, I knew it was 
working in our favor. Because yeah. the thing is, when you run right off the bat early in the game, you don't get many results early. That's true. And against a team like Alabama, who we know can put up points whenever, uh, especially that deep ball from Milrow to Burton and those guys on the outside, mm-hmm. you've got to kind of you've got to go early. So, yeah. um, I didn't hate the game plan right off the bat, but I I'm glad we got to the run game when we did. <laughs> Wait, I mean, but to your point, it definitely looked like y'all were having a reliance on your defense. It, it, it yeah. to me at least, it seemed very early on that it was going to be the defense. If the, if it was going to get done, obviously by the run, but that defense was going to have to stand up. And and to your point, man, we, we know Milrow. I mean, he's got a heck of a deep ball. You know what I mean? He's able to get it out there. But I think one of the things that was key is that once you kind of buckled that in, once they are, they hit a couple deep ones on you, and then you're like, all right, nothing behind us. Then you force Milrow to do the one thing that we talked about all year that he struggles with, and that's those intermediate routes. There was mm-hmm. a couple passes, short little swing passes that he missed. Yeah. And it was and it was huge because you're just like, oh, wait a minute. For all the improvement that he had, maybe it was the fact that he's scoring all these touchdowns. Maybe it was the fact that you're beating, you know, a Georgia that we are kind of overlooking the certain things that we actually called you out for in the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's – and I mean – I understand why we were relying on that defense because you look at Alabama's defense, Dallas Turner's a bona fide first round pick. You got two starting NFL corners on the outside. Like there's still starting NFL players all over that defense. Alabama's defense was very, very good this year. Um, And that's why my prediction going in was 20 to 17. I thought it was going to be very low scoring. Uh, It stayed right around that, but um, yeah, it was, it was a great defensive game on both sides. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, uh, Milro. I think part of the reason he improved so much is because he didn't really play the defenses later in the season yeah. that forced him to do what he's not good at. True. He, yeah. he kind of had the freedom to run and set up those deep shots. And we, for the most part, boxed that in and made him do those throws he struggles with. So, uh, like I said, a phenomenal game plan by Jesse Minter, and it worked. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> forever much we want to say, you know, we're, we're it was it was a great game plan. I, I completely agree offensively and defensively once things started hooking up. But there's also that side that says sometimes it's better to be, better to be lucky than mm-hmm. good. And mm-hmm. all the missed snaps – by Alabama, uh, the muffed punt, the buff punt at the very end of the game, where I'm like, oh my god, no, almost the safety, right yeah, now. right, don't do that right now, do not do this right now, you know no. what I mean? But at the same time, also the fact that you know maybe that one missed extra point for you guys. Yep. Yep. Alec made a great point last week that you hit the extra point. We're not even talking about overtime or late in the game. The game's already yep. won. You know what I mean? So talk to me about those last – you got four minutes to play. I sent you in the group chat. This is time to be great. This is when yeah. you have to make those plays. What were you thinking in that and then going into overtime? I I felt calm, actually. I was – the way the run game was going, I still relied on our defense. It when <laughs> – let me tell you, when we had that muffed punt, wasn't so calm, but no, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, once once we got that ball back, I was like, "Hey, let's just let's go to overtime." And as soon as the coin toss went in Alabama's favor, it's like, "Oh, come on!" Right. Uh, and then, but then I was like, "Okay, you know what? The offense is hot. Let's get them on the field and quorum to break that run." Mm-hmm. I was just like, "Okay, I yeah, I felt confident at that point." And then just the botched last play uh for Alabama there I don't know I thought looking at it initially that it was kind of like an RPO kind of that mm-hmm. swing out or that quarterback draw um but yeah it was uh that was an interesting play call it was it was and I I've seen people go back over and like recap the play because that when I saw that I was like 
that's the call you choose for the last yeah. play of the game? Like, really? But if you look at it, with that running back that went out, you took the safety out, and yeah. then the one guy uh, on your D-line crashes down, if he takes that and maybe takes a step to the left and kind of slants that, he, he would have a better shot than what he had. I mean, yeah. he got knocked out three yards out of the end zone, and I was just like, there's no other – uh, you know, like RPO, there's no other RPO. There's no other option that he could have just run up the middle. Like, I know you trust his legs, but not that much. That was, or, that was or even something like a a read option or do kind of like a, a boot with Milrow that has the option to pass. Right. You know, like do, do something else, get Milrow into space. That's what I thought they would do. Right. That's my thing. And even, and even if you were going to do that, even if you were going to sit there and try to run it up, Tim Tebow at that joint, jump pass it. You know what yeah. I mean? You know everybody will squeeze in. You ran the, the running back out, so they took care of the middle of the field. Run, 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 jump pass over the top. I mean, yeah. obviously, in hindsight, it's a lot easier to talk about this stuff yeah. and, and to second guess and play armchair quarterback or whatever. But at the end of the day, you guys got the W in overtime. And and me, for one, I, I know you were – kind of on pins and needles i was kind of on pins and needles we were both <laughs> rooting for you and i was like yeah. a michigan state fan and north carolina fan are rooting for michigan <laughs> come on now <laughs> but look well, we had on. a notre dame fan in the group chat right right yeah it everybody. was like yeah it's all for you man let's go 